Hey everyone, it's John here, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to create this key performance indicator data card in Excel. So this is a great visual for dashboards when you want to show a single value. So a value that uh, your audience that's looking at your dashboard is going to be very interested in. So in our case, our KPI is total orders. So we're interested in the sum of all orders for 2016. And we've got that value displayed prominently in this data card here. Now this data card also has a title so we can tell that it's our total orders. And then behind the value, we also have a nice little line graph that shows both 2015 and 2016 sales. And then we also have a percent difference indicator so we can tell how much our total orders have changed from 2015 to 2016. Now this data card is dynamic and it's actually linked to this slicer that I have here for our products. So if I select different product groups, so here maybe I want to select uh, yellow road bikes, then my data card is going to update. So now I can see easily that I've got 1.1 million uh, orders for yellow road bikes. And that figure is up 692% from last year. So same if I select uh, black road bikes, I can see that we've got 113,000 in orders, and that's actually down 15% from last year. So let's take a look at how we can build this in Excel. Now before we start building our data card, let's just take a look at the data behind it first. So this is some order data for sports equipment, and we've got an order date and a product name, and an order total in the data. And if you want to use this technique on your own data, all you'll need is just some sort of date field and some sort of value field that you want to show in your dashboards. And this data card is going to be driven by pivot tables. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take this data and create a pivot table from it. So let's go to the insert tab and pivot tables. And we get our order data in there. And we're going to put it into an existing worksheet so down here and press OK and we've got our blank pivot table now to work with and the first thing we're going to do is add in the order date into the rows area and that's gone and grouped it by years and quarters but we don't want this quarter field so we'll take that out and if we go up here and expand these so I can click on these Then we also have it by years and months now. And we're just going to filter out 2017 and beyond. We're only interested in 2016 and 2015. So we're just comparing two years. And if your dates didn't automatically group like that, you can always just right click on them and go to the group options here. And you'll be able to select to group it by months and years. Now we also want to add in our order total into the values area. That's the value we're going to be summarizing. And now the value that we're interested in for our data card is this value here. So we want the total for just 2016. So that's the subtotal for 2016 here. And again, if you don't have subtotals in your pivot table, you need to go up to the design tab and turn on subtotals. So show all subtotals at the top of the group there. But the other value that we wanted to see in our data card was a percent change. So we're also going to add in a second instance of our order total into the values area. So this is just a duplicate. And what we're going to do with this is right click on it. And we're going to show values as and there's a percent difference from option here. Now our base field is going to be years because we want to show the percent difference from year to year. And then our base item is going to be previous because we want to show the percent difference from the current year to the previous year. So if I press OK, that's going to add that calculation in for me. And we've got no values here in 2015 because there's no 2014 data. So there's no previous values to compare it to. So that's OK. And again, the value we're interested in here is this subtotal value. So the percent difference from 2016 to 2015. Now to reference these in our data card, we're actually going to need to uh, reference them outside the pivot table first. So if I press equals and just select that first subtotal, 
Excel is going to create this get pivot data formula for me. And I can press enter. And that's kind of like an absolute reference for pivot tables. So if the shape of our pivot table changes, we're always going to be referencing that 2016 subtotal. Now, if you don't get uh, get pivot data formulas created automatically for you, you can just select your pivot table, go to the analyze tab and this options here. Make sure that generate get pivot data is checked off here. And we can also make the same reference to our percent difference subtotal. And these are the two values that are going to be displayed in our data cards. Now the formatting in our data card is actually going to come from this cell. So I'm going to format that as a currency. So press control one to open up the format cells dialog box. And I'm going to pick a currency with no decimal places. And here we're going to add some special formatting. So Again, press control one on here. So we're going to add some custom formatting. So I'm going to select this custom option here. And, and we're going to add in this for special formatting here. So what this does is for positive values, this is our first part here. For positive values, we're going to show a little up arrow icon. And it's going to be a green font. And then for negative values, we're going to show a down arrow in front, and it's going to be a red font. And then the number is going to be formatted as a percentage with one decimal place. So I can press OK. And that creates the formatting for me. So you can see that uh, right now it's a positive value, so I've got a green up arrow, and the rest of the number is also green. Now we'll come back to these later. The next thing we're going to do is create another pivot table which is going to drive our line chart. And I'm just going to copy and paste this pivot table. And let's just put that up here. And this one I don't need this second instance. And the years I want as columns. And I want the months down the rows. And now we're going to create a pivot chart out of this. So if I go up to the Analyze tab and select this pivot chart here. And we're going to do a line chart for this guy. And just the basic line chart here is good. And press OK. And our chart comes with a lot of things in it. So a lot of these we don't want in our little data card chart. So you can right click on these buttons and hide all field buttons on chart. That's going to remove those buttons. Don't want those. I also want this legend down at the bottom here. So I'm going to go up into my uh, pivot charts tools design tab and just pick a quick layout option with that at the bottom like that. And then the rest of the items I'm going to delete. So I'm going to select the axis and delete them. And that way we're just left with the lines and the legend. And then I'm also going to right click in my chart and format the chart area. And the last thing we're going to do is just remove the fill so we have a clear background that way. And our line chart is pretty much ready. We're just going to cut and paste it into the area where we're going to make our data card. So I can paste that in there. And we're just going to leave it off to the side now and forget about it and work on the other bits. So next we're just going to build the background for our data card. So if I go to the insert tab, I can insert some shapes. And I'm going to insert a rectangle. And this is going to be the main uh, shape of my data card. And in the format tab, we can change the fill. So I'm going to pick this color here, this blue, dark blue. And I'm also going to change the outline to a black. And we're going to add in another rectangle for the title, so something like that. And this one's going to be a white fill and a black outline.
And when we click inside that shape, we can then start typing in it. So this was total orders. And right now the font's white, so it doesn't appear. We're gonna wanna go to our home tab and change the font color to black. So let's just select that and black. And we're also gonna increase that quite a bit. And let's center it there. And let's also just capitalize that O. And that's looking pretty good. Now we're also going to insert a shape or a rectangle for our actual KPI number. So something like that. And this we're going to have no fill. So we want it transparent and also no outline. And with that shape selected, if I go up into the formula bar, I can actually reference the cell that contains my subtotal value in this sheet here and press enter. And then our value is going to display dynamically in that shape. So when that value from the pivot table changes, our shape's value is also going to change. And for this guy, let's also increase the font size. And center it. And let's just make it a little bit bigger. And we could do the same thing for our percent difference value. But if we do that, then our custom green formatting color isn't going to show through. So instead what we're going to do is go back there and just copy the cell and come back here. And if we go to the home tab, there's some paste options and one of the paste options is a linked picture. So if we select that, then we're going to be able to see our custom formatting as well as the value. And this linked picture is going to be dynamic as well. So whenever the values change, it's going to change in our picture. Now we actually see the cell outline there and we don't want that in this data card. So if we go back to this sheet that contains our value, we can go up into the view tab and just remove the grid lines for that. And it's going to remove the grid lines in our picture. And I also want to center this in this area. So in the home tab, I'm just going to center that value. And let's just decrease that size a little bit. And now we're ready to put all these pieces together. So I'm just going to resize this chart a little bit so that it's fitting into our data card. And right now my chart is actually the lower layer and I want to change that. So I'm going to go up into the uh, format tab and just bring it forward. And that way my chart is sitting on top of my background. And let's bring this guy over. And now I'm just going to hold control and select all of those items because I want to center them. So up in my format tab, I can align and just align center. It's going to perfectly align everything for me. And the last thing I want to put this in my data card somewhere nice and center like that. And actually I'm going to go back and change the font color to white and maybe also increase it just a little bit more and let's move that up
And then again, I'm going to hold control and just select everything. And actually, if I select one of the shapes and press control A, that's going to select everything. And then I can come up here and align center again. And just make sure that that number is perfectly centered. And let's also move this guy here just above the legend. So I'm just going to select the legend and also make the font uh, white color there so it shows through a bit better. And let's bring this chart down and bring this number down and bring this number down too. And now just control A to select everything and again format tab and align center. And the last thing, when I'm perfectly happy with where everything's placed, and actually I'm just going to move this down a little bit. And when I'm happy with everything placed where it is, I can press Control A and select everything again and group it together. And then that way everything's grouped together so you can move and resize it and everything's going to work together well. And I just noticed that the chart here actually has a border, so I'm going to go and format that and get rid of the outline. So no outline. And now we've got our data card exactly the way we want it. We can also add in a slicer. So if I select a pivot table and go to the Analyze tab, we can insert a slicer and for product name. And we want this slicer to actually affect both these pivot tables. So right now it's only affecting the one. So I can right click on it and go to report connections and just make sure it's connected to both pivot tables there. And I'm just going to cut and paste this here. And we can use this to control our data card now. So that's how we can build a pretty fancy looking data card for our key performance indicators to prominently display them in our dashboards, along with some extra little information about them. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video. We'll see you guys next time.